talk, the home of where the talking is good. It's your boy Cody and the other guy yes, here once again. Yes, good sir. conversation, tiny <laughs> table, the big room. Here we are. So funny. We've been doing this for how many episodes we've been doing it for, and it, it still gets me that you call me the other guy. I know. I, I still love it. I'm I, here I, for I, it, bro. I don't really know what else to say at this I'm point. the other guy. I, I've been here for so long, I can't get away from I it. I am Cody's goose. I am goose to your maverick. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, my goosey boy. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right, so guys. We, so how long is this podcast going to go, buddy? <laughs> 14 days. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be jumping in. We're going to be talking Diving a little bit in. about the Asbury <laughs> Revival. Um, that That is what it's been coined as. That's what's been happening. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's right. 14 days is how it's how long it's been going, give or take, roughly two weeks. I didn't keep weeks. track. Oh, or maybe it'll be 10 weeks. Oh, uh, 10 weeks. Sorry, 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 sorry. 10 days. <laughs> it's uh, been burning. My bad. 10 burning. days as of, as of tomorrow. I don't know. Basically, it's been going on for quite a while, yeah, which, dude. you know, I will say that is pretty darn impressive, even so if it's impressive. not even just, even if you don't want to call it a revival. It's yeah. a long time. That's a long time to, to actually worship and, <laughs> and, and actually give yeah, respect dude. and give honor and mm. glory to I mean, that's a long time. It reminds me of the upper room. They stayed there. I think for like 10 days. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's like the initial revival, right? Yeah. Of the church. I mean, yeah, I would say that that would, that, that I would consider that revival. Right. So, um, it, it, this is pretty impressive. And, and also too, that it's, it's young people, yeah, which I is cool. That. Uh, you know, I was watching one video of a guy talking about it and he said it was actually really cool because, uh, there were no reserve seats. Mm. So when these famous people, you know, these well-known ministers or even some of these well-known worship leaders started to attend. It's just like, oh. Sit with everyone sit, else on the grass. Where, sit wherever you can find a seat. It's there, the way there's it no, should there's be. There's no way. You can't just go right up to the front. Yeah, or, hey, it's the way it should You be. don't get a mic. Yep, yep. <laughs> you're not, you're, I yeah, love you that. can lead worship, but you're not really supposed to lead. It's not about that right now. It's right. about him. And that's, that's pretty awesome that right. they actually... Uh, I, I don't know if that was the intent or if that was the objective. As soon as they saw like famous people like, get to the back of the I don't know if that was like that or if they were just like, hey, we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing and just keep it going. Which uh, over here in Conspiracy Rob's Corner. Conspiracy Rob's Corner. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how much of this stuff is, is, is legit and how much is fabricated. Like did famous people actually reach out to them and be like, can we come sing? Can we come? Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know, like, Carrie Job, I saw her drive sure. by it, but I, I don't know that she ever tried to be a part of it, like an integral part. Like, yeah, let yeah. me just come and, like, worship and be a part, yeah. be a spectator, be involved out here with everybody else. I, I really wonder, you know, because you know how stuff happens. It's like sure. that telephone game, right? Like, one person says, oh, Carrie Job was here. And then, like, the next person's like, did you hear Carrie Job wanted to sing here? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I wonder what the actual information is. I wonder what, like, actually happened. I wonder how many. You know, top tier artist, top tier ministers actually tried to be involved on a up like out front yeah, level. Yeah, like, yeah. let me share something from the yeah. pulpit. Let me sing. Let me lead worship. I wonder how much of that actually really did happen, and how much of that has just gotten out to the public as this person said that this person said that this person said, mm. and now this is what's coming to us. Interesting. I'm just interested to know. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, but regardless of all of that. If it, if it is true, I, I absolutely agree with it. I think it's fantastic because when it comes to stuff like this, in my humble opinion, you want God to be the focus. Yeah. I mean, if he's you don't not want the focus, be, why are we doing it? Right. <laughs> well, with all things, right? Yeah. Even with like a regular Sunday service or a Wednesday night service. Like you and I don't want to be the focus of the service, right. even though we're the ones that are in charge of the service and we're reading the service and we're uh, conducting the service. The point is to bring glory to yeah. God and for God to be glorified. Right. I mean, uh, last Wednesday we were doing prayer. <clears throat> And because uh, you know, we do that on Wednesdays, noon prayer shout out, 12 p.m. Come join us yeah. uh, here at the building. Um, but I, I was actually praying out and you know, I was praying for just the services that night. And I, I said, as we go to take our pulpit and then the Lord was like, mm, my mm. pulpit. And I was like, oh, you're right. Your pulpit. We're just there. Like, yeah. And so it was just kind of like a, a yeah, quicker yeah, yeah. reminder. Like, it's not about not that I even felt like it was about me. It was just you know, I was just being yeah. in my, you know, my normal flow of like as we go to take our pulpit. It's like, well, it's, it's actually his pulpit. And mm. He is Amen. the focus. Amen. He's the one on stage. He's the one that's, that's delivering right. the word. We're just being a, a humble vessel. Yeah. <laughs> doing whatever he wants to do. Amen. Which brings us to 
that side of discussion, right? That's why I get so angry when people get behind the pulpit and they say what they want to say. Mm. They, they give their opinion. They give their thoughts about stuff going on because it's not your pulpit to do that. Yeah. That's not the place for it. If you yeah. want to call a different meeting and talk about that stuff outside of the pulpit that God's given you, that's fine. But the, the pulpit is given for the ministry of God's word. Mm. You know, and we can give as we study the word and, and that shapes our beliefs and, and, and we get doctrine and we, we, we minister that, that's going to come through different vessels and look differently, right? But I think sometimes when we get in trouble, and one thing I've really been trying to cut out of my ministry from the pulpit or the Lord's ministry that he's put me as the steward over is making sure that I just leave Robert's Mm-hmm. opinion about this out and let's just try to stick as much to the word yeah. and then I can give like okay this is what I perceive that this is saying and how we implement this in my life that kind mm-hmm. of stuff is fine but I just need to stay away from like you know like this is good we're talking about the Asbury revival it would be wrong for us to get up tomorrow night and be like here's my thoughts on it mm-hmm. well what are your thoughts aren't going to help anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. in this particular setting right this is not the time for Robert's thoughts. Mm-hmm. This is the time for this is what God says from the word about your life and about how we live and how we walk by faith and whatever particular issue mm-hmm. or topic we're talking about from God's word. And so I think the best way to keep the focus on that is by that understanding. This is not my pulpit. It's mm-hmm. his. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that keeps yeah. us focused on our intent yeah. and what we're doing from that area of ministry. Yeah. And it seems like it was, I, I haven't done a whole lot of research on, like you said, like kind of the inner workings of like how this even worked for them. I'm yeah. not sure, but it seems like, from my understanding, it was it, it was student led and it stays student led for the most part. <clears throat> I, I did hear that there were a few staff members of the university that, sure. that would share every now and then, um, but I, I heard that they kept it mostly worship. And then when there was teaching, that it was gospel focused, which is very important. Amen. You know, lead them to Jesus, get yeah, people yeah, yeah. born again. I mean, this is. That, that's a perfect opportunity, perfect moment. Have yeah. people get saved, uh, which is beautiful and amazing. Which, it, whenever you come to stuff like this, it's always funny. It kind of reminds me of like, <laughs> okay, this is going to be a huge one. But it's, it's like, you know how we have all these different denominations and people believe different stuff for like with healing. They mm-hmm. believe different stuff with like tongues. They believe different stuff. <clears throat> you, the know, Holy Spirit. you just have these variations. Uh, I was reading the book of Acts. I, I'm in the book of Acts right now. And I was reading last night, you know, when Peter went to the Gentiles and then he came back from the Gentiles and they were explaining everything that happened. And they were trying to decide that at that time, the big discussion was, do Gentiles need to be circumcised? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which let's just pause right there. Imagine being a Gentile and like you get born again and you're like, Hold oh, wait, on. Wait, wait, whoa, what? whoa, whoa. Hold on. I feel like on that's now. something you should let me know about ahead <laughs> yeah. of time. Let's talk about that. It's like a waiver that I needed to sign the terms and conditions. And so what's so cool <laughs> is like they they went and they they had a delegation and yeah. they discussed this stuff to determine if the Gentiles in fact needed to be circumcised yeah, as yeah. all the Jews were circumcised at birth or whatever it was. And so they they come up with like they decide that okay physical circumcision is no longer relevant because it's a circumcision of the heart mm-hmm. right and Apostle Paul gets into that later on in the Pauline letters, but then it's funny because they go back to these different churches at Cyprus and Antioch and all these other places because they were in Jerusalem having this discussion. They go back with this letter, and at the at the bottom of the letter they list out like four or five things that you have to do. To as a Christian, we believe that you should abide by this. And I could just imagine like a Gentile reading that letter and like not even really paying it. Just, they're just looking for one thing. Is circumcision on this list? You know what I mean? And they're like, <laughs> don't eat meat from a cow that's been strangled. Don't do, do this. Don't do this. Is circumcision on? No, sir. All right, cool. We got it. <laughs> I can commit to this. Oh you know what I mean? Gosh. But it's interesting. I said that because even at the start of the church, it's like there was these, everybody had their opinions as what should this stuff look like mm. that's not really defined to us in God's word. Yeah, yeah. What should the, and everyone has their opinion. And I think what we're seeing now when it comes to like this Asbury revival is again, everybody has their opinion as to sure. what revival should look like. Sure, yeah. My opinion of what revival looked like may vary from your opinion. Our church's opinion of revival may vary from the Methodist church down the street or the Baptist church down the street. And so it's like we have all these different viewpoints. And and what to me is kind of dangerous is because we all have this viewpoint is what ends up happening is everybody just comes to this simple conclusion. This isn't real revival. Mm. And it's like, well, I don't know that that's fair. Yeah. Because maybe just because it doesn't fit my preconceived idea of revival does not mean that it's not revival. Sure. Yeah. And who am I to say how God's going to pour out his spirit? Yeah. Whether it's in worship, whether it's in ministering of the word, whether it's in trances, whether it's, you know, being slain in the spirit, not being able to move for five hours, 
who am I to say yeah. how God is to pour out his spirit? Mm. You know what I mean? But I think one thing that you said that is interesting is we can always judge any work by its fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so before with podcast, we did we did talk about this a little <clears> bit, but that's something, that's why I haven't really like given a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Again, like you saying, they're my thoughts anyway, so right. it's, it doesn't, you know. <clears throat> but it's just like, I, I don't want to comment too much on it because who am I to discredit what might actually be happening? Sure. Or who am I uh, to like put my own, you know, perspective on that like type of situation. Let, let it be what it is. And yeah. then like, like you said, let me just judge what comes after this. Because to me yeah. that, that will be what I believe real revival is. If this is actually happening, if this is real heart change, if there really is a movement being mirth, birthed to generation Z to come back to God right mm. now, then there will be fruit from this. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you know, in acts five, you know, that was one of the things that, I thought was interesting, and I wanted to make sure that I that I brought it out. But this is when the apostles were uh, arrested, and basically they were about to be punished for what they've been doing. But this one guy, he spoke up. He spoke up, and uh, let's see, where was it? Which is amazing because he didn't even agree with what they were doing. Right, so to he speak. didn't really agree, but he said, "If this movement's from God, yes, there you go. He then said, this movement will. There you go. Yeah, he said, if it's, a, if it's of man, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fade out. That's right. right. But if it's of God, then why would you want to interfere with yep. God? And right. so that's right. basically where we can kind of judge this right Absolutely. now. If it's a man-made thing, sure, it was cool, and yeah, it brought glory to God, but it'll fizzle out, and we'll forget about it. Right. Cool. Right. That was That's the end of it. But if it's of God, yeah. why would we want to interfere with it? Right. We don't want to interfere with what God's doing. And right. so just let God do what God does, <laughs> yeah, amen. and let's see what he does. This the, the church as a whole has a really bad habit of, like, eating its own. mm like when something good starts to happen somewhere else, we are like the most critical. Because we want it to be us. Judgmental. Maybe that's part I think of that's it. What I don't it know. Is. There's like yeah. some pride of like, oh, it should have been our revival. Right. Why didn't we worship for 14 days? <laughs> well, you can. You, you know, know what I mean? mean? Like, yeah. I think that, that that is unfortunately uh, really bad right now because like we've talked about before, there might be some Christian leadership type people that they're making it about them. Right. And they're trying to capitalize on this revival movement yeah, right now, but right. it's like, it ain't about you, bro. Right. Like, get That's out of the, the thing. Step aside. This is about God. Yeah, let God shine. <sighs> and, and, and people coming back to him and being, what well, we've tried talking about, revival, an improvement of the state of condition right. of this, right, of, right. Of, of the body of Christ. And specifically right now, Gen Z, mm. which is awesome Huge. because there's been such a gap from what I've sensed and also kind of seen is that it, there's been a gap in a deliverance of Gen Z into Jesus. And I don't know if it's because the millennials, I don't know if it's the boomers. Yeah. I don't know if it's the Gen Zers. The, I don't know. It, there's been a, there's, something has been missed. And I believe that God is saying, I don't want this generation to miss out. Yeah. And it's kind of like, even with our own lives, when God is doing something, don't try to push an alternative agenda. Don't try to push an alternative. Just let him do what he mm -hmm. wants to do in your life. Yeah. And don't put your spin on it. Don't put your, flare on it just let god be god yeah. and that's the same thing with like this revival just you know i mean <clears throat> i said it in, in school of ministry on sunday night it, it's like i don't someone is being strengthened mm. somebody is growing closer to god through yeah. this so why would i discredit it at all and i see people they're so quick to jump on social media <clears throat> ministers and, and church people and they're like because you know if you haven't seen it it's a pretty, it's a, it's a, I don't know, is Asbury, is it a Methodist? I know our it's Asbury is a non-denominational. It's a non-denominational. But when I see the pictures and stuff like that, it looks like they don't have a lot of like the bells and whistles that even we have. Yeah, I think the, it looks like, I think they even call it a chapel. Like it almost looks like an older traditional type church. Yeah. Like I feel like I even saw pews. Or maybe I'm just making that. But it, I that, think it you're right. I think it you're felt right. that way. If yeah. there wasn't pews, pews definitely would fit. Yeah. And it would look nice. So when you see that, I instantly see church people jumping on this person. We don't need haze machines. We don't need LED walls. We don't need sound systems. Look at God breaking out. He's waiting for you to get rid of yeah, all yeah, this yeah. stuff so he can move. And I'm just thinking like, why did you jump immediately to that? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, okay, now you're saying God can't move if we have projectors and lights. Why can't he? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, we're so quick to put our own weird little spin on things. Yeah. And it's just like, no, just like God, it's kind of like you go back to the book of Acts when Peter went and he ministered to the Gentiles and he came back and the church was like, whoa, you can't do that. Mm. And then he began to tell them all the good things that happened and they're like, oh, okay, you can do that. Look <laughs> at God like, yeah, reaching out to that. the Gentiles. And then he said something very interesting. He quotes Jesus and he said, John baptized you with water, but I'm going to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. And then at the end of that, he said, who am I to argue with God? Mm. 
So it's like, if God wants to pour out himself this way, who am I? Yeah. I mean, I'm just the pot. You know, we watch, Rachel and I love watching cooking shows and Chef Ramsay, he's so good because he just like yells at people and throws mashed potatoes against the wall and he's just like crazy. If you're an idiot sandwich, I'm an idiot <laughs> sandwich. That's what I always think about. He puts the, the, the bread, bread on, on his ears. <laughs> That's so great. Say it with me. I'm an idiot sandwich. <laughs> He's so savage. But one thing he does, they have this show called Master Chef. He's he's it's a little different vibe than Hell's Kitchen. He has this show on Master Chef where he takes like these home cooks and they're developing them into a Master Chef. Okay, yeah, yeah. And one critique he gives to them lots of time is like if they have like this, I can't ever say it. What's the really fancy steak? Flame mignon. Did sure. I say it right? Flame mignon. And like what he'll do is like if they have something on the plate that is more like the mashed potatoes or the salad, and it's more like it's prettier and it's it's spruced up nicer than the steak. Mm. He's like, the mistake you made here is you didn't let the steak be the star of the plate. This is the star of the plate, yeah. and you buried it with all this other stuff. Dang. You know what I mean? You're you're trying to make the mashed potatoes the star of the plate or the salad the star of the plate, and it's not the star of the plate. The, this, Those the are 70, supposed to complement the right, steak. Right. The $75 yeah. steak is the star of the plate. Mashed potatoes Dang. cost you $3. And I feel like we do that as the church. We want to make all this other stuff the star of the plate when it's all about Jesus. He's the star. God is the star. The Holy Spirit is the star. And so we need to not worry about all this other stuff. Let mashed potatoes be mashed potatoes. Yeah. Let a salad be a salad. Let toast be toast. But let God be God. And yeah. he is the center of the plate. He is the star of the plate. And he should be in every service, whether it's an extended 14-day service or whether it's just something that we do on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. God is always the star mm. of the plate. And the church is so quickly to put other stuff on the magnifying glass. And it's like, no, just like magnify God. He's moving amongst young people. That's so like, good, Let man. that be the star of the plate. Look at that. Look at what God is doing. And, and forget about all this other stuff. And let's stop arguing about all this other non-stuff. And let's just celebrate God. Mm. That's so good, man. I, I, I guess like I'm just thinking about if, if I ordered a $75 steak, but I like the potatoes better than this. I'd be so irritated. You that, would be super that, bad. That, I would be. That I invested, you know, my hard-earned money and my time into something that I, <clears throat> the potatoes were better. Like if I went to a church, like, well, the light show was cool and the music was great, but mm. I didn't actually hear anything from God. Right. You know, it's like, all right, I spent an hour and a half or so. and Yep. That was fun, but yep. I don't have anything to take home with me. Right. I don't have anything that to, to like live off of. Yep. And that's that's what a steak is supposed to be. It's supposed to provide sustenance mm. for your body. And so like we should be grateful that this steak is the star of the mm-hmm. plate. This this steak is the star of the right. show because it's going to bring us sustenance. Right. And that's what God is. God is supposed to bring us sustenance. He's supposed to yeah. bring us Amen. life. He's supposed to bring us encouragement. Mm. And so if we take him out of the picture, where are we getting our life It's going to be tough. Where are we getting our encouragement It's going to be from? tough. You know, lights can only do so much. Right. <laughs> Good music can only do so much. Right. Eventually, it's like, all right, let's get on to the stake. We need the presence of the Most High yeah. God. Yeah. And he can move whether you have projectors or don't have projectors. Right. And he I think can, that's what it is. He it's, can move whether you have lights or not. They can add and they supplement. Add. All right. And, and maybe, you know, because uh, God, not that he needs to have anything added by any means because he is God, but I, I do believe that there are people that sometimes they need a little push yeah they they need sure they need to be comfortable enough to enter into the presence of god so there's nothing wrong with that but don't forget who the star of the show is the only thing god needs is a hungry heart yes there you go it's the only thing he needs those who hunger and thirst after righteousness they shall be filled yeah that's what he needs he needs a hungry heart and you can have a hungry heart whether you have pews or chairs you can have a hungry heart whether you have lights or screens you can have a hungry heart no matter the situation and i think there is a, a a there is something to be said that some churches, and I'm not the person to do it, do need to be corrected on that. They have made it more about the light show. Yeah. They have made it more about the haze. Mm. But we have lights and haze, and we have an LED wall here, and it's not about that at all. Yeah. Do I like it? Yeah, it's dope. You There's know what I'm saying? There's been times we don't use it. There has been times we don't use it. There's been times where we strip it all down, and we go off an acoustic guitar and a cajon, right? Because yeah. that's what the Spirit of God told us to do for that particular service. So if you think you need any of that stuff and it's going to make or break your service— yeah. I, I will just tell on myself, I, I, okay, I did fall victim to this because mm. when we moved into our new facility, because we came from a building that used to flood oh every time gosh, it rained, it would flood. <laughs> uh, we had nothing fancy in that building. Our projector screen was a four by eight sheet of plywood that I hung on the wall. 
and I painted it white. It's still good. <laughs> that was our screen. It worked. Man. And it worked, you know. It's beautiful. And, and even before I painted that and put that on the wall, we had an overhead projector that man. somebody that Tyler used to put slides on. I remember <laughs> like that was so in like, youth ministry. That was the, in youth ministry. The times, man. I remember like I was 14 years old and I remember Tyler just standing next to that flatbed and, projector and even just like after the song would be like Okay, someone's going to have to share this podcast with Tyler because I do remember one time because we we kept a folder on the stand next to it and one time he dropped the folder and so it's like, how am I going to find the song? You know what I mean? All these songs are just scattered well, on the floor. The, what's bad is those projector sheets, they're clear. They're so clear. the font is black yes. on our black floor. Black floor trying so to get good them. luck, man. Good Lights luck. are off. The sheets are everywhere. But we had nothing in that building yeah. and God moved. Amen, man. We had nothing in that building and we had we had great times. And I would consider even some of those times, times of revival. Yeah. Because the definition of revival, at least the one I've been going off for the longest time, is to make something better or to strengthen something. Mm, that's the better way to say it. I said an improvement. I couldn't think of the strengthening part. Yeah. Good. So, so that can happen whether it's a 14-day period or a 14-minute period. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, again, here we are putting God in a box. Mm-hmm. This is what revival must look like. Yeah. Well, here's my question. Did it make something better and did it strengthen something? Yeah. yeah. If the answer is yes, then it was revival. Yeah. According to that definition. I like that. You know, but so here's the mistake I made. We didn't have none of that stuff in the building. We had no haze. We had, towards the end, we started sprucing it up a little bit with some stage yeah, lights. a little bit of lights. Yeah, a little bit of lights. It looked good. We did a little pallet wall. I went down to, drove around for days collecting pallets from different businesses around Madison. And then I stripped them down and hung them on the wall. I remember when I nailed one to the wall, I hit an AC hose. So we didn't have AC for a week. <laughs> good times. But... Um, and then we moved into our other building and it was pretty basic. Yeah. The, what is now torch, you know, they fancied it up. It looks really good now for the children's church. But then we moved to this building. We got an led wall. We've got lights. We've got haze. The latest and greatest. We finally have a stage that can fit our whole band. Right. (laughs) People aren't standing on the floor. Uh, You know what I mean? We've got a stage where we can fit everybody. And I thought this is it. We're going to grow. We're going to, when kids come to this building and they see that we've got, this upstairs that you can see and we've got video games and we've got foosball and we've got ping pong we've got a basketball court we've got an what led what more wall. could a kid want what else can a teenager want they're going to tell their friends about it and we got in here and we didn't grow at all we kind of decreased a little bit <laughs> and it, and i think it was really my fault so i'm sorry <laughs> everyone out there i apologize i put it more about the things instead of about god hmm. and it's like he had to recenter me. Hmm. I made it more about the mashed potatoes. I made it more about the salad and the toast. And God was like, even this building is for me. Yeah. Everything you do is for me. And he doesn't want us to glorify these things, glorify him yeah. and give him praise for the things. But it's like, we've, I've made that adjustment in my heart. I don't think you ever got into the ditch with it, but now we're starting to see growth. Yeah. And it's so simple, right? Yeah. You see it in the Word of God all the time. When they glorified Him, even Jesus said, "May I must be lifted up, so I can draw all men unto Me." Mm. And he was talking about being lifted up on the cross. Yeah. But now, even today, we can lift. We are supposed to be lifting Him up, mm. glorifying Him. Yeah. Right. And Jesus said, "Glorify Your Son, so He can glorify the Father." So we bring glory to Him, and it brings glory to God. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. So we can't get over into these other things. We always have our preconceived ideas. I went into the ditch on that one, and we're out, I'm out of that ditch now. It's all about God. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get more of God in my life, more of God in every aspect of my ministry. If you want me to fast, I'll fast. If you want me to read, I'll read. If you want me to pray, I'll pray. Whatever I got to do. Mm-hmm. And on the heels of that comes growth. Amen. Right? Yeah. And so just let God be God. Let God be God. In your life. Yeah. What's he, let God be God. And I think that that's something that I feel like I've kind of started to see is this. There's the other churches that are trying to replicate this. Right. And it's like, you can't <clears throat> yeah. really replicate it. This is not a formulaic type equation. Mm. Is that the right way to say it? Formula? There's no, there's no formula to, to spark revival like this. That, I don't know if how, that's a word, but that was awesome. Yeah. Formulaic. Form, formulaic. Mm-hmm. I like it. It will be a word now. Yep. <laughs> the, to me, like... I, I, we cannot just in our own strength replicate what happened here. God has to lead you to do it, That's and right. then ultimately That's God right. has to do it. You know yep. what I mean? Like we have to be willing to do yep. it. We have to be willing to speak out. We have to be willing to play our instruments or be willing to do what he wants us to do, but he is going to be the one that actually 
initiates revival Amen. and actually makes it happen. And, and I think it comes from people desiring his presence Absolutely. and desiring his goodness and desiring revival in their heart, having sure. that hunger for more of him. That's probably the, the only portion of a formulaic equation right. that I can give you is yeah. desire more of him yep. and desire revival in your heart. Yep. And then I believe you will experience revival. Revival, in my opinion, doesn't have to be 1,600 people in a chapel. It can be you in your bedroom. Amen. With Amen. God. Amen. I, I believe that, similar to Robert, I don't know if it's been like a, a, a full-on revival has already happened to me, but revival has started within me. Yes. There is Amen. a revival being birthed and starting Amen. within me every day now. Yes, I, yes, yes. I, I'm trying so hard. Like Even if I just like get a chapter of the Bible, I'm trying to mm. get more word in me, mm. more light in me, more knowledge in me, more presence within mm. me. I, yes. I don't want to just be let I want to be walking in step yes. with the spirit. Like the, the scriptures say, I want to be walking in step with him. And to do Glory that, to I got to be close to him. I got a desire to be near him. Mm. And, and, and so for me, maybe it's not a revival, but revival is being birthed within me. And, and, and that's, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm excited yes. for myself and what God is yes. doing. It's so good. He's amazing. Amen. And uh, same. I've been going off of that simple definition to make something better or stronger. Mm. And since the start of the year, my relationship with him has gotten nothing but better and stronger. So I'm being revived. Yeah. yeah. You know, Cody's being revived. We ask you, be revived in your own life. Mm. Ask God, make this relationship better Make it stronger. So Revive me, oh God. We've been saying it for a while. Revival or bust. Now, what's that look like? I have no idea. All I'm saying is I'm open to whatever it looks yeah, who like. Who are we to tell you what revival is? Yeah. We, we will not tell you what revival is. I refuse. <laughs> yeah. And, and Cody's right. There's no heavenly lever I can pull to make yeah. this happen. I told so, uh, uh, someone else the other day that we invited to camp. I said, we're not trying to manufacture a move of God. Yeah. I'm not trying to manufacture. I can't make this happen. All I can do is pursue him with all of my heart. And then this is what I know. When I pursue God unrelentingly, however you want to say that? Relentlessly. We, yeah. When I pursue him, he'll do his God things. That's what I was going to say. It's like, we can't make it happen, but I know it's going to happen. Yeah. he'll do. <laughs> God does God things. That's yeah. who he is. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think lots of times people just don't cry out for it. I think lots of times people are completely satisfied where they are. I think they're completely satisfied in their relationship with him. They're completely satisfied in their, their, their life, and, and they don't desire more. Mm. Well, praise God, he convicted my heart, and he said the status quo is not good enough. You need to start pressing in, mm. and we have to respond to that, yeah. right? It's one thing for him to tell us that, but then we've got to respond to that, and it comes with sacrifice. Yeah. It comes with dedication. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what do we want? Mm. Do we really want more of God? If that's your desire, he, every person on planet Earth, except for those who have not heard the gospel yet, every person on planet Earth has as much of God as they want right now in this very moment. So true. Right? So you could have more, like even last night, it was uh, Rachel and I, we'd watch a couple shows together, and uh, she fell asleep, and I was laying in bed, and I just felt like, I really want to get up and just pray right now mm. just to fellowship with him. And then my flesh was like, nah, bro, you really want to sleep. <laughs> and I was like, but I really want to pray. And so in that moment I had to decide, do I want more of God or am I comfortable with what I have? Yeah. So I got this one, right. I got out of bed and I prayed. It wasn't long. It was like 14 minutes, got out of bed and prayed and just fellowship with him and just talked with him. And, and you know, I don't always get it right, yeah. but last night I got it right. So you can have as much God, you know, he, it's like that show that you and I watch that I, I really enjoy limitless, mm -hmm. right? You can unlock as much of this as you want. And, and there's in that show, it's a pill mm -hmm. or whatever that unlocks, but the fullness of his brain, <laughs> the fullness of his brain, you can unlock the fullness of God. You just got to desire it and pursue it, mm -hmm. you know, desire and pursue it. And, and then God will do God things. Um, and so just ask him. Just, I, I ask you to do this. Let this be your prayer. I want more. Amen. I want more. And then when he shows you how to get more, go after it. Pursue it. 
run after it with all of your heart. Be like David in Psalm 63 when he said, I go hard after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Dude. I didn't realize that was the right verbiage. The, the, the verbiage he used, yes. I go hard after I this. I go hard. <laughs> he, so good. Yes. And so uh, I'm going to be reading it on Sunday. He, I go hard after this. And that's why God is able to take care of me because I go hard after him. And so, you know, and and we got to desire that. And some days maybe I fall a little bit short and I can do better. But one thing that Cody and I have even been talking about is, is let's not let this wean. Mm. Let's, let's keep, let's keep each other accountable. And because over time stuff does, Yeah. you know what I mean? So we need to encourage each other and be like, dude, come on, come on, let's push. Let's get that fire going again. Let's get that burning on the inside of us. And so just ask God, I want more of you. I want more of you. And then when he shows you whatever you got to do, whether it's reading your Bible more, praying more, cutting some things out of your life, whatever it is, be willing to do that. And I guarantee you, you will have more of God. Amen. I hope that the Asbury Revival has at least stoked your fire a little bit. Sure. Or at least got you more curious of like, is there more to this? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if nothing else, Mm. let Asbury Revival at least be an indication that there's so much more to God than we could ever really understand. Yeah. I don't even fully understand what's happening over there. Mm. I don't really care to understand what's happening <laughs> right. over there. I just know if, if God's in it, who am I to judge? Yeah. Let God do what God does. And then I'm excited to see the fruit of it. Amen. If it's God, yeah. then there, there will, be, will fruit. be fruit. Absolutely. And I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see what God's going to do through a generation. I'm stoked to see what he's going to do through us. Like we've been talking about, this Amen. is a different year. It is. And So convinced of that. I can't say that it's coincidence. Mm. It can't be coincidence, mm. right? Like, this is crazy. This mm. is wild. God That's God true. is up to something. Yeah. He's moving on his people, and he wants to be seen and glorified mm. and honored, and he wants to be with his kids. Oof. You know, for the past 14 days or so, he's been hanging out. Vibing. With his people. Mm. And fellowshipping with them. Loving on them mm. as they love on him. He's been equipping people, strengthening them, saving people. I mean, I, I don't know how many people have been saved, but even if it's just one, bro. Praise God. All of heaven rejoiced. If 14 days of revival happened for one person, worth it. Praise God. One person got revived. And every believer became stronger. Amen. Amen. God, God knows what he's doing. Amen. And I'm just going to trust God. <laughs> yeah. end, I'm just going to trust God. Right. The end. The I'm end. Just the trust end. God. Done. <laughs> Here's the question I have for you. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask it to myself and to Cody and everyone listening and watching. God is ready. Mm. Are you? God is ready. Are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to be ready. I, I want to say I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> like SpongeBob. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, I'm ready. Yeah. For, God is ready. Are we? Mm. And so just let's shift our hearts. Let's go after this and let's go after it hard like David did. And let's let God do some God things. I don't want to miss out on a movement. Mm. You know, if God mm. wants to, to use, yep. you know, yeah. the people that, that I'm involved with, the circles that I'm with, or he wants to use me, like, I don't want to miss out. Yeah. I want to be ready for when, it, when I'm called. I don't want to be looking for my shoes when it's time to get out the house. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's nothing worse when you're like, crap, I don't have my stuff. Where's my thing? Where's right. my phone? Where's my keys? Right. Where's my bag? Let me like, find everything. Like, I want to already be readied up and mm. good to go. So when God calls me, I'm already equipped. Yep. I'm already ready to preach his word. I'm already ready to, to worship him. I'm already to lead people into his presence because I've already been with God. I've yeah. already been fellowshiping with him. Yeah. So when it's time for the movement, I'm ready to move. Yep. It's I forget where the scripture is, but even uh, Israel it says that they missed out on their appointed time because they did not recognize the season. Mm. So this is our appointed time. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna recognize the season. Mm. God is He's always been ready. Let me pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Let my glory cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. He is ready. You know what I mean. And so let's recognize it so we don't miss out on it. Mm. And let's 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 maximize what God is wanting to do. Hungry hearts, clean hands, pure hearts, and let's just go after this and let's watch what happens. Amen. Watch God do God things. Amen. Stoked. Whew. I have an interesting fact. Do it. I don't know if it's going to just completely derail everything we've been talking about, eh, it but might. it's fun. <laughs> I just think it's more interesting because someone talked about it. So the last time that the Asbury Revival happened, this is the second time it's happened. Yeah, I saw something like the, the 70s or something. Yeah, the first time that happened was in 1970. Okay. Um, in 2015, 
Okay. There's a minister. I, I don't really know the guy. I guess there's controversy around him. I, have you heard? You heard of Bob Jones? No. Okay. I don't, Bob I don't, a. Know, I don't know the guy. <laughs> I just know Bob Jones High School, so I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, there's some minister named Bob Jones. I don't think he's actually alive anymore. But in 2015, he said, he, he's like, uh, when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super no. Bowl, there will be revival. Um, and what's interesting what? is in 1970, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. What? And there was a revival. But there was also the time that they won the... the, the like three years ago. I was about to say, there was also, but that was also <laughs> COVID, so maybe God was like, mm, we'll, we'll wait. <laughs> I don't know. So that's the only thing. That, like, maybe it was like that kind of falls what? apart a little bit, but it's still pretty what? wild. Like, what are the What odds? kind of profit? That's so random. So random. So random and so odd. But like, I mean, it's coincidental, I guess. He got lucky. <laughs> Here's my thing. Here's my thing. If God was going to give us a road sign as to when revival was going to break out, surely he'd use a better team <laughs> than the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> surely. I thought surely you were going to go somewhere different, but you were like, Surely he would use the Denver Broncos. Surely. I mean, God is smarter than that. God knows, you know what I mean, all things. <laughs> he is all knowing. <laughs> He has better taste. The sky oh is blue. The sunsets gosh. are orange. He has clearly shown us who his favorite football team is. It's not It's not connected. The Kansas City Chiefs have nothing to do with the move of God. <laughs> but isn't that still pretty crazy, though? Like, what, like isn't that just wild? It is wild. That, that in it is, 1970, it is they won, and then there was the Asbury Revival, and then also this year. But it, uh, to me, it also doesn't make sense. Bro, they, I'm about it, to go down a rabbit hole. But wasn't the Super Bowl, like, this past Sunday? Uh, it was last Sunday, two weeks ago. Okay, well maybe was it before the revival? Well, now I don't know. Now I'm confused. Did it ha- interesting? Because let's see, I taught, I, I I I taught this week. I was off last week, and I was so, <laughs> I was so triggered because in 22 years of ministry, the one Super Bowl I'm actually home for oh, is the Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> one of the teams I can't stand because I'm the Broncos. 100% and you you despise every team in your division. And so I was like, are you kidding me? The Broncos have been to the Super Bowl 3 times since I've been in ministry and this is the one I'm home for. <laughs> this is the one I'm home for. But anyways, uh so that was 2 weeks ago. I don't know. It's interesting and and I would have I'm going to Google, did they really win in 1970? They did. I looked it up today cuz I was curious. That's so weird. Isn't that crazy? It's full Weird. Full weird. I, I don't know that it's actually connected. I just thought it was an interesting fact. Where's this guy, Bob Jones? Where where was he in Missouri? Where where was he located? Was he a Kansas? Well, he's wearing a Kansas City Chiefs hat. Why he's doing the prophecy? <laughs> he used to play for the team. I don't know. He, he's just got. He's still determined. Like they got to win the Super Bowl, and God's gonna have revival. Like that's what he wants. <laughs> I will say that's the most random. Yeah, fact. I, I would love to like look at the whole prophecy to see like was it all about the kids? Jeez. I'm gonna look it up after the podcast. <laughs> so, that is it, so interesting. It is interesting. Uh, anyway, I feel like we had a really good podcast with a really interesting thought for you guys to go investigate for yourselves. Have fun with that. <laughs> Think about that today. Oh, I'm thinking the wheels are <laughs> like there's rubber burning in my mind right now. My wheels are. Just... <laughs> I'm thinking about that. That's uh, so weird. It's let, so weird. But not, don't let that fun little weird fact derail the goodness, yeah. the, the, the real, I believe, encouragement from today. Here's the thing. You can read it all through the scriptures. You can even see it today. When God moves, people are always going to question. Yeah, yeah. There's always going to be the naysayers. Yeah. There's always going to be, you use air quotes, the non-believers. <laughs> Charlie's a non-believer. <laughs> There's always going to be... You know the haters, if you will. I mean, and, and even be real. Uh, there was a whole part of me was like, something seems off. Like the, the uh, uh, my immediate gut reaction was like, mm, well, here's the thing. In my here's my thought process though. Like some people could watch our live stream and watch our saturation services, and they're probably like, mm, probably is that God? Probably. You know what I mean? What's yeah. going on there? Probably. So it's like, and 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 here here's the church is the worst at it. Yeah. It's like. The world's gonna judge us. Yeah. Jesus told us about that. They're gonna they're gonna mock us. They're gonna judge this. There's no way they can perceive these things as real. Jesus said that they 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 cannot receive from these things because they do not understand these things, and they do not understand these things because they do not know me. Yeah. Right. So they're never gonna understand until they get born again, because spiritual things are a mystery unto them. But the church just needs to stop fighting with the church. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you know. Let God move, like I said, let God be God. And, and like you said, as long as there's good fruit coming from it, mm-hmm. like if it, if fruit is coming from it that's hurting people and yeah. causing harm, yeah. 
and not edifying and not building up the right. church, not getting people born again, then we can clearly judge it for what it is. Yeah. You, the Bible does say you judge a tree by its fruit. Yeah. And so, but when people are being strengthened, when the relationship with God and with each other is being is getting better, when people are getting born again, and some people have gotten born again yeah. through this, good good fruit is coming. Right, exactly. And and I feel like that's what after I had that reaction, I feel like that's what God told me is like, hey, wait for the fruit. Yeah. Wait for the fruit. And so I was like, all right, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, but I but I feel like that that that's that that's all right, like to be in that place and to be like, God, I don't know how I feel about this. And God's like, just wait for the fruit. Yeah, we definitely, there's, why Why can't we ask him these questions? Yeah. Why can't we talk to him? He wants us to talk right. to him. It, it's okay for him to, and also I think there is a safe approach to that, right? You know, where, where we kind of like, we see some stuff and we give pause for a second, you know what I mean? Because we want to try things. Right. Not try and see if it works, but kind of try it by test. the word. Yeah, test. Test. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, I can just speak from our own personal ministry. When God gets to move, and I, I don't want to be questioning, right. like I just want to be able to go. I, I want to go with way. God. Yeah, I good. <laughs> don't get in the way. I don't want to get in the way. I like that verbiage. Yeah. I don't want to get in the way. Let me get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so God yeah. can move. Yeah, and there's going to be things that happen that I don't understand with my brain because I can't understand God with my brain. How can I? Yep. I can't fathom. Yep. His goodness. I can't fathom His glory. I can't fathom the move of the Spirit in my natural mind. Mm. And so I've got to get away from that. Yeah. And I've got to be open with my mind that when stuff happens, as long as I don't get a check in my spirit, mm. then I just go with it. Amen. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. So again, <laughs> throughout this, if you've been having doubts, if you've been questioning it, similar to Acts 5. If it's a man-made thing, yeah, it'll fail or it'll pass away. It'll do its thing and it'll be gone tomorrow. But if it's God, let God do his thing. Yeah. And there will be fruit. <laughs> And so it's similar to like Rob said, you know, I believe that rivals, revival is coming and revival is uh, available for anyone that wants it. Mm. But do you want it? Yeah. And are you ready for it? Yeah. Those are good questions to ask yourself this week. Do yeah. I want revival? Do I want more of him? Yeah. And am I ready for what's about to happen with him? And don't limit God by having to understand everything he does. Mm. Because he's going to do some stuff. If you're really hungry and you're really thirsty and you're really ready, he's going to do some stuff that you may not fully understand in your natural mind. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever read scripture, you can see that. <laughs> There's a whole lot of stuff that happened in scripture that I just don't get. I'm just like, wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> Hold yeah. up. Jesus did a whole bunch of stuff that I just don't get, you know? And so uh, I can't understand God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so we do this from spirit to spirit. You are a regenerated spirit, and that mm -hmm. part of you is going to live for all of eternity. This flesh will pass away from earth it was made, and earth it will return. My natural mind cannot fully comprehend and understand. My mind is limited, and God is limitless. Mm -hmm. And so just be careful that when he's wanting to do something, even as you're praying in your own room, and you feel like, I did this the other day. I was driving home from church, and I just felt inspired to just start shouting hallelujah. That made me seem like I was crazy i was in my car by myself and i just started shouting hallelujah and i'm like <laughs> i'm in my car by myself i'm like who can hear me <laughs> <laughs> the car next to me probably just heard that right now. and it makes sense to my mind i'm like why do you want me to shout hallelujah i'm in a car by myself but you know i felt inspired to do it i just did it Amen. and so i feel just don't limit god don't limit yeah. god his moves will always fall in line with his word. He won't get you away from his word. He won't get you into problematic areas like that. But just follow God and be ready for anything. Amen. Follow him. Be ready for it. Woo! Glory. It's going to be amazing. Hey. Hey. All right. We love you guys so much. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.